A number of metro constructions across the city, apart from being an eyesore, have caused a lot of inconvenience to Bengalurians over the past couple of years. This is all set to change with the roads being constructed over busy metro stations 60 feet under. The road connecting KR Circle and Mysore Bank Circle used to see thousands of vehicles every single day. Despite being one of the busiest roads in the city, it was closed for motor vehicles for the past three years. Wondering why? Namma Metro has been busy drilling underground tunnels through the city and the road was closed owing to the construction work 60 feet under in addition to underground metro stations. With the work almost complete, the road right above Vishweshwaraya Tower underground station has been reconstructed. It will be thrown open for traffic in the next couple of days and will be one of the first roads in the city to be constructed over Namma Metro's underground stations. See, our metro has uh, two lines, east-west and the north-south. Both lines have got underground stations. Now, east-west uh, line is in a fairly advanced stage and out of the five stations, four in four stations, the civil works have been completed. These are the Kaban Park Station, Vidhan Sola Station, Vishweshwaraya Station and the City Railway Station. Majestic Station is a big interchange station and uh, on this station the work is still going on and about 30 to 40 percent progress has been achieved. Uh, we are planning that all these stations uh, except Majestic, uh, we, try, we are trying to see through it that the roads on top are opened before the monsoon sets in. Several busy roads in the heart of the city were closed to traffic owing to the busy metro constructions. Even the alternate arrangements made for the vehicles were not anything but convenient. With the underground tunneling work of the first phase of east-west corridor close to completion, traffic in the city will definitely ease. This is expected to happen in the next two months. So far, there are a total of five underground stations under the east-west corridor of Namma Metro, which are almost complete. These include the Vishweshwaraya Tower Underground Station, Kaban Park and Vidana Sauda Station, which are among the six underground metro stations between MG Road and Magadi Road. The completion of work is definitely set to come as a relief for Namma commuters and with many roads being constructed over tunnels and underground metro stations, it will add a new dimension to travelling on Bengaluru's roads. Pavitra for News 9, Bengaluru. Although there are different facilities and even modes of transport to ease traffic congestion in the city, it seems to only increase. Installation of signboards directing vehicle users is a crucial aspect that is missing. Here's a report. If you travel to Kempegowda International Airport via Hebal, you will come across a signal-free flyover built by the National Highway Authority to augment free flow of traffic towards KIA. But this flyover has only been counterproductive as there are no signboards directing vehicle users. People who want to go to Tumkur, Yelahanka and even KR Puram are forced to do a U-turn after taking the flyover for it leads them elsewhere. It is the responsibility of the highway authority to erect signboards to guide vehicle users. But it is strange that the authorities have done little to rectify the problem. What annoys and even frustrates vehicle users is that they have to travel six long kilometers to take a U-turn, thus unnecessarily traveling 12 kilometers in all to and fro. In this regard, traffic expert Sri Hari and Bengaluru Traffic Police Commissioner have even issued a notice to the authorities concerned, but it remains useless. A fortnight ago, I, along with the Traffic Police Commissioner, personally visited the spot and examined the situation. The situation is really bad out there. We have even issued a notice to the authorities concerned to install a signboard, but nothing has fructified. The number of accidents may increase if no action is initiated. At least now the authorities must wake up from their slumber and install signboards. Not doing so will only worsen the problem and affect vehicle users at large. Maltesh, News 9, Bengaluru. And from electricity mess to flyover now, the flyover that was thought of to be a solution for Hennur Banaswari traffic problems looks abandoned. The high tension wire that posed a threat for completion of the flyover has not been removed yet. Incomplete construction, high tension wire right next to the incomplete flyover. Such is the state of the flyover in Hennur Banaswari main road. 
even after five years of it was begun to be built. This is the pathetic state of affairs. The flyover that was due to be completed one and a half year ago is still under construction and still there are no signs of completion. BDA, which is in charge of the flyover construction, has only been giving reasons for the half-done work. Well, what is the reason? High-tension wire poses danger. This has been the reason for a while now. But what have the authorities done so far to get rid of the high-tension wire or to search for an alternative? Will it ever arrive? KPTCL had ordered a machine from China. This machine was deemed to be the solution for the Henor flyover problems. The machine which was expected to arrive last December has not arrived yet. Chief Minister Sidramaya and Home Minister KJ George, who had visited the site last year, had ordered the officials to finish it by January. Due to the negligence by KPTCL and BDA, the residents of Hennur are suffering, that too, without a proper road. When will the machine from China arrive? Is there no alternative to this problem? Why are the officials concerned not providing any solutions to people's problems? By Maya Malianda, News 9, Bengaluru. And while the residents of Devanahalli are fighting water woes, they are fighting because they have not been supplied with water for months together. Here's the story. Empty pots, dry taps, parched throats and dehydrated faces. Take a look at these little kids and women waiting for hours for drinking water to be supplied to them. This was the scene witnessed in Gadda the Nayakahalli locality of Devanahalli. Mind you, this is not the first time that students and residents have been waiting for their share of drinking water. For the last three to four months, the residents are reeling under chronic shortage of water. Around 800 people reside in this locality, but most of the hapless residents are seen waiting endlessly for portable water. Along with the residents, even animals are made to suffer due to severe shortage of water. The concerned residents had complained to the concerned authorities several times, but their complaints only fell on deaf ears. <laughs> The residents of this locality had tried to get bowels drilled to meet the demands of their village. But it so happened that they were unable to reach the groundwater table despite drilling into the earth to almost 1500 feet. Even the two borewells that were drilled as per the orders of Panchayat have not come to their rescue. It is learned that both the bore wells have dried up. With no choice in hand, the residents have been compelled to purchase water from private water tankers. Drinking water is a basic amenity which should be provided by the local water board. But in case of Devanhalli residents, it has failed miserably. Will the water board and the concerned authorities spare a thought for the hapless residents at least now? Manjay Gaura for News 9, Devan Halli. Well, a heritage structure in Lalbagh is in danger and the authorities seem to be ignorant about it. Take a look as to what we're talking about. Lalbagh is one of the bigger attractions of Bengaluru and one of its historic structures is in danger. Authorities have started renovation on the residence of the director, which is about 150 years old without the necessary safeguards that should be applied to a heritage structure. Lalbagh's heritage structure, the residence of the director is to my left. Now this entire building is being renovated. Apparently this is the kind of renovation that's going on. And uh, a lot of objections being raised to the kind of renovation work that is on. You can see workers all atop the building. You can see workers, workmen on the top of the building uh, removing the tiles and uh, carrying out structural changes to this to this building now this entire building you can see the plaster uh, that that has been peeled off from this building and the replastering would be done now all these tiles are, are being collected this building has undergone renovation more than once in the past 
Now this is yet another attempt to renovate it uh, by the PWD. The PWD has given it over to a contractor uh, who's, who's carrying out the uh, renovation. Now the issue is, is the renovation being done according to the norms laid down by the intact? That is a big question because this is a heritage structure. Can this heritage structure be renovated without proper guidelines? Now that is the moot question here because this building uh, used to have as its residents John Cameron and several other greats who were here. Now this is the inside of the building, the renovation work which is, uh, which is uh, underway here. Now you can see workmen chipping off, laboriously chipping off at the uh, plaster. Now this is the plaster being chipped off and uh, most of this, most, most, most of the bricks uh, are all ancient bricks. More, many of them are over 150 years old. This is all part of the original structure that, that is uh, being removed uh, and, and uh, the effort is to replaster it and make it look new. But the big question is, is INTAC supervising the entire operation or is INTAC only uh, advising them from outside is this entire renovation being supervised by intact is a big question because unless it is done systematically unless it is a planned renovation things would not the result would not really uh, match up to what their expectations are this is the residence where great haughty culturists like cameron crumbigal javaria and mary gauda lived a botanical garden is in danger of losing the heritage value of a priceless structure. Lal Bagh has lost much in the last century due to mismanagement, apathy and short-sightedness. Will this be another? Ansi Kalappa, News 9, Bengaluru.